Mga kapatid, tayo ba ay pinagpala ng Panginoon sa bagong taong ito? Palakapan po natin ang ating Panginoon. Praise God. Today is uh, Anointing Sunday. Anointing means smearing or rubbing oil on the head of those who were consecrated. Papahiran po natin ang langis. Ang bawat isa, tayo po'y tumanggap na sa Panginoon bilang Panginoon at sariling tagapagligtas. At dahil dito, kailangan po natin ngayong ma-empower, mabigyan ng kakayahan, kapangyarihan upang mapaglingkuran natin ng mas mabisa, ng mas mahusay ang ating Panginoon, ang simbahan ng Diyos, at ang mga tao ng Panginoon na kanyang nilalang. Ito po yung Anointing Sunday. And we are going to do this today after the closing prayer, uh, before, after my message. Hallelujah. Mga kapatid, sa mga lingkod ng Diyos na nakarinig, halimbawa kay Carlos Anacondia, nang siya po ay nagpray, yung pong mga walang ngipin, subalit may pustiso, na wala po yung kanilang mga pustiso, ito po ay tumalsik. At unti-unti, ito po ay napalitan ng natural na ngipin. That is anointing. Okay? That is anointing. Nung ipinag-pray po niya, may isang three feet doon na tao, may isang three and a half feet, nung ipinag-pray, tumangkad ng six inches. That is anointing. Huwag po nating tipirin ang ating palakpak para sa ating Diyos. Yan po ay hindi kaloob ng demonyo. Kaloob po yan ng ating Diyos sa pamamagitan ng kapangyarihan ng banal na Espiritu. Maaaring nabasa na po natin ang mga aklat ni Guillermo Maldonado. May isang pagkakataon, mga kapatid, ipinagpray niya ang isang batang babae na noong bata pa ay natusok ang kanyang mata, natanggal yung eyeball noong pong batang babae yon at magmula ng kanyang kabataan, hindi na po siya nakakakita. Paano ka makakakita ko yung eyeball mo ay wala na. Ito po ay dinala kay Guillermo Maldonado and because Guillermo Maldonado was an anointed servant of God na siya po ay pinagpray, unti-unti po may naramdaman yung batang babae sa kanyang mata. And after a few minutes, lumabas po yung eyeball at mula noon, siya ay nakakita. Praise God. That is anointing, mga kapatid. Panahon nila Apostol Pablo, Apostol Pedro, sino mang madampian ng panyo na naidampi sa katawan ni Apostol Pablo pag ito'y dinala sa may sakit dahil hindi lahat ay nakakalakad upang kuntahan si Apostol Pablo, sila po ay gumagaling. That is anointing. Sino pong malakara ng anino ni Apostol Pedro? Narin ito po sa Acts of the Apostles, sila po ay gumagaling. Amen? Unfortunately, dito po sa simbahan, wala po tayo sa labas na pagtitipon, kaya wala pong anino. Okay? Gagawa po tayo ng anino sa kapangyarihan ng banal na espiritu. But it is also anointing brothers and sisters for someone to just keep quiet in one corner and hear the Word of God and be guided by the Word of God. A small, quiet voice. And he does not have to ask people, read books, 
to seek the guidance and the will of the Lord upon his life. To me, that is also anointing. The anointing to hear the Word of God. So you don't have to search for meaning. You don't have to search for feel-good speakers. You don't have to, to, to search for those management books on how to do great things. Because the Holy Spirit is with you and you can hear the Holy Spirit to me, that is anointing. Palakpan po natin ang ating Panginoon. Praise God. So, kung tayo po nakatanggap na sa Panginoon at nais nating paglingkuran ng Diyos, we have to covet the Spirit of the Lord. We have to covet the anointing that comes from the Lord. Gusto po nating umawit dito sa harapan ang ating boses sa hindi masyadong maganda, covet the anointing from the Lord. And pretty soon, kayo na yung second fiddler ni Sister Arlene, Sister Rapam, ni Sister Danica. Okay? You want to play the instrument? Covet it, mga kapatid. Of course, you have to work at it. But with the anointing of the Lord, that is going to be possible. Amen? Praise the Lord. Palakpakan po natin ang ating Panginoon. Many times, we are prevented from reaching our optimum level, mga kapatid, because there are so many yokes around our life. Marami po tayong yoke. We want to be prospered. But the yoke of poverty cannot be destroyed. We want to preach. But the yoke of impossible speech, you're not good in public speaking, that is a, that is a spirit. And we have to destroy that yoke, that spirit that prevents you from speaking before the congregation. Marami pong mga yoke yan. And remember that if we receive the anointing from the Lord, those yokes shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Amen? Maliwanag po ba yan, mga kapatid? Huh? Remember that we are, we are wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, territorialities, wicked, uh, wicked spirits in high places. Yan po yung ating kalaban. And if our, and if our uh, struggle is against uh, spirit, we have to deal with those spirits by the anointing of the Lord. Amen? Praise God. Oh. Sino ba rito ang anointed? Okay? Sinasabi po sa Matthew chapter 7, 22 to 23, Many will say to me, in that day, and sa ito po ang sabi ng Panginoong Jesus, marami ang magsasabi sa akin, sa takdang panahon, ang sabi ng Panginoon, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Lord, hindi ba nag-prophesy kami? Hindi ba nung sinabi ko dito sa taong ito, ikaw ay yayaman, yumaman siya. Ikaw ay magkakaanak, nagkaanak siya. Eh, Pinagpray ko itong taong ito, gumaling. Lord, we spoke in your name. We healed people in your name. Yun po sinasabi rito, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name, have cast out devils. Imagine. Ha? Imagine. Nakapagpalayas ng demonyo. Nakapag-deliver. Nagkaroon ng restoration. And in your name done many wonderful works. Yan po ang sinasabi ng mga taong lumapit sa Diyos. And then, will I declare unto them, ito po ang paninyak ng ating Diyos, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Marami po sa atin dito, nakakapag-prophesy, 
Marami po sa atin dito na nakakapag-preach. Marami po sa atin na nakakapag-evangelize. Pero hindi po ibig sabihin nun, kayo po ay saved na. Okay? Now, let us distinguish between anointed in and anointed upon. Okay? Sa John 14.17, mga kapatid, binabanggit po rito, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot perceive, because it sees Him not, neither knows Him, but you know Him, for He dwelt with you and shall be in you. Brothers and sisters, when you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, okay, true to your heart, you were sincere, you were honest, you were open, okay, tinanggap mo ang Panginoon, then salvation has come to you. Okay? Salvation has come to you. And the Holy Spirit, it is the Holy Spirit that will establish you as a child of God, okay? as a bride of Christ with the seal of the Holy Spirit. That is anointing in. Okay? Yan po yung anointing in. Because remember, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, maliwanag po ito. Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Question. Nararamdaman ba ninyo na yung banal na Espiritu ay nananahan sa inyo? Answer it, mga kapatid. Na, na, nararamdaman ba ninyo na kapag halimbawa kayo ay napikon sa traffic, Okay? Marami rito, napipigong sa traffic eh. Dahil tatlong oras, mula, mula Kubaw hanggang Kesos, hanggang, uh, alimbawa, dito sa, sa Commonwealth. O mula dito hanggang Makati, dalawang oras. Okay? So kapag ka napipigong at galit na galit na, sino rito yung nagsasabi pa na, Lord, marami salamat sa traffic na ito. <laughs> sino ba ang nakakapagsalita nung ganun? O, oh, kabugin natin yung ating uh, dashboard. Ano naman itong traffic na ito? O kaya pag may nagkat sa atin, ano ang ating sinasabi, mga kapatid? Sasabihin ba natin, purihin ang Diyos sa buhay mo, kapatid, at kinat mo ako. Ha? If you feel that you can be magnanimous, if you feel that you can be forgiving, if you feel that you can say, praise the Lord sa buhay mo, kahit na pinipikon mo ako, then the Holy Spirit is in you. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. However, that indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, mga kapatid, can be lost. Huwag po ninyong iisipin na sapagkat once upon a time, nakatanggap kayo sa Panginoon bilang Panginoon at sariling tagapagligtas. Subalit kayo ay nabulid sa kasalanan sa pagiging makamundo, you rebel against God. You rebel against the church. And there is so much pride in you. Pride of life. Lust of the flesh. Lust of the eyes. You think you will still be saved? Mga kapatid, sa tingin ba natin, tayo ay saved pa rin? Tinanggap mo ang Panginoon once upon a time? But then you decided to backslide. You decided to go to the world and be absorbed by the world. And then you, see, you will still say, Save ako. Hindi po. It can be lost. Well, of course, these are doctrinal issues, mga kapatid. Kasi marami nagsasabi, Once saved, always and forever saved. Pero sabi na Apostol Pablo, mga kapatid, Work out your salvation with great trembling. In other words, Save ka na. Tumangka pa sa Panginoon. Then, what do you do? You walk in the Spirit. Amen? Sabihin sa inyong katabi, mga kapatid. Walk in the Spirit, mga kapatid. Hallelujah. Ano po sinasabi sa Galatians chapter 5, verse 25? If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Galatians 5, 25. But earlier, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, the Lord says to Apostle Paul, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill 
the lust of the flesh. If we are struggling against the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, what should we do? We must walk in the Spirit. What is walking in the Spirit mean? It means thinking and doing things according not to the flesh, but according to the Spirit of God. Amen? Praise God. Palakpakan po natin ang ating Panginoon. In short, we have to keep the Holy Spirit of God, the indwelling presence of God, by walking in the Spirit, by obeying the will of God sa ating mga buhay. Hindi pa tayo ay member na tayo ng elders ng isang simbahan. Nakakapag-preach ka na. Ikaw ay nakakapag-pray na doon sa mga may sakit. Ang mga may sakit ay, ay gumagaling. Pero ang sabi ng Panginoon, ha? ano sabi ng Panginoon? I don't know you. Why? Because you regard iniquity in your heart. Okay? So, what about anointed upon? Okay. Anointed upon is for service. And this is what we are going to do today, mga kapatid. Okay? We are assuming that the Holy Spirit is now in you. Amen? In you. Sapagkat kayo ay nakatanggap na sa Panginoon. Kayo ay gumagawa sa kalooban ng Diyos. Therefore, the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit is in you. We will not debate that. We will not challenge that. But today, this morning, we are going to make sure that you are going to be anointed for service. For service. Remember the Acts of the Apostles, mga kapatid? The Acts of the Apostles. Itong mga apostles na ito, tumanggap na sa Panginoon. They live with the Lord for three years. And yet, ang sabi ng Panginoon, huwag mo na kayong aalis sa Jerusalem. Wait for the, wait for the Holy Spirit to dwell in you, to empower you, ang sabi ng Panginoon. And true enough, nang ang Panginoon ascended unto heaven, after 40 days here on earth, what happened? Itong mga apostolis na ito started to speak in tongues. They prayed. And I'm sure when they went out and when they prayed for the sick or on, prayed out for the sick, ano what happened? Gumaling yung mga mamay sakit. Nakapalag, nakapagpalaya sila ng mga demonyo, ng jablo, Because they were empowered by the descending of the Holy Spirit upon them. Basahin po natin yun sa Acts. And they started to speak in tongues. Yung mga lumalabas ng sinagoga, ng templo, sabi, Aba, Sino itong mga ito? Eh, alas 9 pa lang na umaga, lasing na. Akala, lasing. Yung mga disipulo, because they were speaking in tongues. Some understood their language, some did not, but basically, they were speaking in tongues because they were empowered by the Holy Spirit. This is what we want to happen today. Kapag ka tayo po ay na-anoint, ang lahat po sa atin, hindi lang yung pag, not only in speaking in tongues, mga kapatid, no? Rather than speaking in tongues, I would rather that every one of us will be anointed to hear, to hear the Word of God. Para hindi po tayo nangangapa. Saan kaya ako pupunta? Sa Middle East o sa Japan? Saan kaya ako pupunta? Dito sa lugar na ito o dito? Saan ako magtatrabaho? If you listen carefully to the Lord our God, and you have been anointing to hear the Holy Spirit, hindi na kayo magtataka. Hindi na kayo magtatanong-tanong, saan kaya ako magandang magpunta? Eh, buhay mo yan. Dapat alam mo. Eh, dapat, you should be the one asking the Lord, Lord, where do you want me? What kind of ministry should I be doing? Eh? Of course, we do not, we do not uh, discourage prophetic revelations in the church. Because someone, probably one of the elders, can say, the Lord spoke to me, and the Lord is saying, you should be evangelizing. You should be preaching the Word of God. Wala pong problema yun. Kaya po ang sabi ng Panginoon, sa 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 22, 
this anointing, okay, this kind of anointing for service are for those with the anointing. Anong sabi ng Panginoon? Do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Kapag tayo ay pinananahan na ng banal na Espiritu, mga kapatid, the Lord considers us as His own. We belong to the Lord. Okay? We belong to the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord which left soul in 1 Samuel 15, kung matatandaan po natin, was the anointing in. Remember na wala po yung anointing kay soul? Yung po yung umalis sa kanya. The anointing in. Saul still had the anointing upon. And this is the reason David could not harm him, could not touch him, much less could not kill him. Ang sabi ni David, I cannot touch the Lord's anointed. Ando pa sa kanya yung anointing ng Panginoon. Pero yung indwelling, wala na sa kanya. Kaya nga, as early as David was only 17 years old, the anointing was transferred from Saul to the 17-year-old David, the youngest of the seven children of Jesse. Kaya sabi po niya, ni Haring David, 1 Samuel 26.10, As the Lord lives, the Lord shall smite him. Hindi ako ang papatay sa kanya kasi yung po mga tauhan ni David nagsasabi, Nakita niyo ha, makal na hari, nag-iisa lang siya sa kweba. Pwede niyo nang patayin. Hinahabol kayo para patayin. Pwede niyo nang patayin. What was the response of David? David said, as the Lord lives, the Lord shall smite him. Not me, it's the Lord. For his day shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. And that's what happened. That's a prophetic statement on the part of David, mga kapatid. Hindi akong gagawa niyan. Anointed ng Panginoon niyan. Kaya mga kapatid, doon sa atin din, sa ating mga buhay, huwag po tayong gagawa ng masama. Let, let, let the Lord take care of these people. Ang sabi nga ng Panginoon, okay, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will recompense. That's the reason why when we release blessing or declaration, lagi natin sinasabi, the Lord is your recompense. The Lord is your recompense. Hindi nyo na kinakailangan isipin, mga kapatid, ang paghihiganti. It is the Lord who will do it for you. Okay? Now, next. Who gets the anointing? Okay? Lahat mamaya, bibigyan natin lahat ng, magbibigay tayo ng anointing by, by administering the oil of anointing. Okay? Ngayon, sino ba yung ina-anoint during the time and during this time? Okay? Nakalagay dyan, it's the, God, it's the anointed of God. Okay? Yan po yung sa 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 10. Tandaan po natin, nawala yung anointing kay Saul. At ang sabi ng Panginoon kay Samuel, Samuel, hanggang kailan ka magmumukmok? Pumunta ka doon kay Jesse, Meron akong nakalaan doon na hari. Yung po ang sabi nito pong si ng Panginoon. Alright? 1 Samuel 16 As the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord and invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. Mula doon po sa, sa tahanan ni Jesse, ang sabi ng Panginoon, I have provided for myself a king among his sons. That's in chapter chapter 16 of 1 Samuel, verse 1. Pakikita po natin doon. Right? So, Anointing, mamaya po gagawin natin, is the physical act of smearing, rubbing, or pouring oil. Eh, mag, uh, ano tayo ngayon dito, kung ang gagawin natin, kukuha tayo ng sungay, ng hayop, pupunin natin ng, ng, ng langis, at ang bawat isa ay ipopour natin. 
Siguro sampung galaw ng kailangan natin para yan eh, ano. At saka paglabas ninyo, naku, punong-puno ng langis. So what we're going to do is a prophetic act. Okay? Uh, yung pong ministry team, dadaan po kayo sa kanila, sa amin, pagkatapos we will say some words of declaration, pagkatapos we will anoint your head with oil. Okay? Hindi po kayo i-anoint sa katawan ninyo. Sa ulo po ang anointing. Alright? Mashak, yan po yung Greek, uh, Hebrew word, means to anoint or smear with oil. And during that time, during the time of Samuel, during the time of Nathan and the other prophets of God, the oil was mixed with fine herbs. Fine herbs. And remember, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who has called us by His own glory and goodness. Pag tayo po ay nagkaroon ng anointing, yan po yung kailangan natin, mga kapatid. Now, who were anointed during that time? Kings, priests, and prophets. In Psalm 20 verse 6, also in Psalm 28, Verse 8. Sino po ang example nito? Of course, ang king, si Saul. Okay? But Saul did not adhere to the word and to the will of God. So the anointing was removed from him and transferred to King David. At that time, he was only 17 years old and he became the king 13 years later. Okay? 13 years later. Tandaan po natin, Pag binasa po natin, yung 1 Samuel 16, okay? ang hinahanap nitong si Samuel ay yung kanyang mga kapatid, kamukha ni Eliab, okay? Abinadab, and Shama. Ito po yung matatandang kapatid ni David. Malalaking tao, matitipuno, talagang mga warriors, mandirigma. Pero hindi po sila ang pinili ng Diyos. Ang pinili, yung bunso, yung pinakamaliit, pinakapayat, pero siguro, pinakagwapo. Okay? Pag tinignan po ninyo yung, uh, yung mukha ni David, doon po sa uh, Florence, yung ginawa ni Michelangelo, talagang gwapong-gwapo ito pong si, si David. Okay. So, he was anointed. But please, brothers and sisters, Okay? Please, brothers and sisters, hindi o ibig sabihin kayo po ay na-anoint. It will be a bed of roses for you. Why? Okay. In 16, per Samuel, the Lord anointed through Samuel, David, at the age of 17. In chapter 17 of First Samuel, pinadala na ng Panginoon si Goliath. Okay? So, unang laban niya yun. Pagkatapos, the Lord also gave David friends, particularly si Jonathan. That's in 18. However, in chapter 18, okay, of First Samuel, dito naman nagsimula yung panabagong struggle ni David because Saul was becoming jealous of David. Sapagkat nung siya ay lumalaban na, okay? Lumalaban na, naging kapitan na siya ng uh, army ng Panginoon. Ang sabi ng mga tao, nagkakantahan yung mga tao, isang libo yung napatay ni Saul, pero si David, sampun libo. That started the jealousy. And it, is, it was the jealousy that killed Saul. Okay? Yan po yung ikinamatay ni, ni Saul. Sa 19, 1 Samuel 19, and ito na yung mga attempts in the life of King David because of Saul. Sa 20, he was warned by Jonathan. At alam na po natin yung po mga susunod pang mga chapters in 1 Samuel. Until in the second Samuel chapter 1, David was proclaimed king not only of Judah but also of Israel, the United Kingdom of Israel and Judah. Palakpakan po natin ang ating Panginoon. So, the king 
is anointed by the prophet. Now, what about the priests? The priests included Aaron and his sons as priests. And you can see this in Exodus chapter 28, verse 41. Mga kapatid, who anointed Aaron and the sons of Aaron? Makikita po natin yan sa Exodus 28. Okay. 2841. Okay. And who anointed them? It was Moses. What kind of anointing did Moses have when he anointed the priests such as Aaron and his sons? Moses had the kingly anointing during the time. See? The king... Okay? The king was anointed by the prophet. The king anointed the priests. What about the prophets? The prophets in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 16, one good example is Elijah anointing Elisha. Because the Lord gave this mandate, huh? this mandate to Elisha, to Elijah, tatlo po yung mandate. The first mandate of God to Elijah is to anoint Elisha as his successor prophet. Second, anoint Jehu as the king of Israel. And third, anoint Hazael as king of Syria. Tatlo po yung pinagawa ng Panginoon kay Elijah the prophet. Okay? But Elijah was only able to do the first mandate, and that is to anoint a prophet. Okay? So, sino po ang nag-anoint sa prophet? Another prophet. Elijah on Elisha. Okay? Elijah on Elisha. But what about Hazael? Si Hazael ang nag-anoint ay ito pong si Elisha, na inanoint naman ni Elijah. What about Jehu, the king of Israel? The company of prophets, the sons of the prophets. So you can see, mga kapatid, the value of generational blessings. Hindi nagawa lahat yon ni Elisha. Ni Elijah. It took an Elisha okay, to anoint Hazael as king of Syria, but it also took the sons of the prophets, meaning the second generation to anoint Jehu as king of Israel. Kaya po sa ating simbahan, mga kapatid, we always give emphasis to linking generations. We don't want the old generations to be isolated from the younger generations or vice versa. We want to link them up. First generation, second generation, kung po pwede hanggang third and fourth generations in one go in the church so that we can secure the security, the continuity of the ministry of the Lord in this church. Palakpakan ho natin ang ating Panginoon. So as a church, as a family, we must come to church together. Sapagkat kung ano po yung ating ginagawa when our children are still young, they will never forget it. And when we go, the first generation goes. The second generation will not do any guesswork because they have seen what the first generation did during their time. They have seen it. But, kung hindi po tayo, hindi po natin ganun ang ating gagawin, then there will be a disconnect between and among generations. Okay? And you can see, that the Lord's mandates were fulfilled because the generations were linked one to another. Amen? Praise God. Palakpakan ho natin ang ating Panginoon. So what does the anointing do? Ano po ba ang ginagawa ng anointing? Lima. Okay? I'll be quick here, 
But please put that inside your heart. Number one, it breaks the yoke of the enemy. That's in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 24, 25, uh, 27. In that day, his burden will depart from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be broken because of the fat. Kapag tayo po ay nag-anoint, it will destroy the yoke of the enemy. Ang yoke po, ito po yung nakapatok. Doon po sa mga baka o sa mga kalabaw. Pag ginagamit po natin ang kalabaw sa pag-aararo, we put a yoke around the neck of the carabao or the water buffalo. Kung ito pong yoke na ito represents to us poverty, spirit of indifference, walang breakthrough, okay? walang financial breakthrough, walang career breakthrough, ang kailangan dyan is to break the yoke of the enemy. Wasakin po yung yoke ng kaaway dito po sa ating batok. Ano po nangyayari sa kalabaw pag natanggal na yung yoke? The karabaw is free. So, when the yoke that oppresses you is broken because of the anointing, then you will be free. Amen? Sino ho ba rito ang gustong maging malaya? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number two, it consecrates the anointed. Okay? Kung tayo po anointed na, okay? anointed na because of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in us, and we are anointed for service, we are consecrated. Say the word, consecrated. Praise the Lord. Leviticus chapter 8, verses 10 to 12. Then Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and all that was in it and consecrated them. And he sprinkled some of it on the altar seven times and anointed the altar and all its utensils and the basin and its stand to consecrate them. And he poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him to consecrate him. See? It was Moses who consecrated Aaron, who anointed Aaron to be the priest. And at that time, Moses had the kingly anointing. Okay? Number three, it causes overflowing blessings. Kapag kahuna kuha natin yung anointing, we will not only be empowered for service, but the Lord will also provide for our needs. Mga kapatid, saan ba nang galing? Yung mga resources na ating ginamit sa simbahang ito. Because we are praying every day. We are praying every Friday. Nagpapas po tayo every Friday. We are walking in the Spirit of God. And when we walk in the Spirit of God, the blessings of the Lord will overflow. Okay? It will overflow. And that is in Psalm chapter 23, verse 5. There's an overflow of blessing. Once we receive the anointing for service. Number four, it also teaches us. Okay? In, uh, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, the anointing that you receive from Him abides in you. Kapag na tayo po ay na-anoint, tayo po ay pinahira ng lakis ng ating Panginoon sa pamamagitan ng ating elders, what happens? Just as He has taught you, abide in Him. Okay? <clears throat> About everything, and it's true, and it's no lie, just as He has taught you, abide in Him. And number five, empowering. Okay? We will be empowered. There will be a, a resurgence of power and ability to preach the word, okay? To encourage. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, doon po sa Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus was as anointed, mga kapatid. Yes, we know that Jesus is both man and God. But God also felt the need, so the need to anoint Jesus Himself. Si, si Jesus na yun. Pero nangailangan pa rin siya ng ano? Ng anointing. Ang sabi po, doon po sa Acts chapter 10 verse 38, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. 
He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. See? It was the anointing that empowered Jesus to do all those great things. Healing the sick. Raising the dead. Okay? Turning, wa turning water into wine. Being able to walk on water. Those are the fruits of the Holy Spirit once we are anointed. Hallelujah. When we are anointed, mga kapatid, we are set apart. Okay? We are set apart. Sa madaling sabi, andyan ang 100 million na tao sa Pilipinas, actually, 113 million na tayo as of last year. 113 million. Okay? Suppose him, ilan tayo ngayon dito? Sabihin natin, 150. O 100 plus. Okay? We would be set apart out of those 113 million Filipinos. Dito po sa posim. I'm sure the other churches are also doing the same. So in their own respective communities, in their own respective churches, they are, the Lord is also setting apart a few of His remnants. Ang sabi po ng Panginoon sa Luke chapter 4, verse 18, and it's on the, on, on the monitor, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me. Ang ibig po sabihin, ang Spirito ng Panginoon ay sumaakin sapagkat inanoint niya ako. Pinahiran ako ng langis. Pinahiran ako ng presensya ng Diyos. Why? To proclaim good news to the poor, He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed. What do we mean when we read those words, mga kapatid? Proclaim the good news. This is to enlighten those who would care to listen to us. Okay? We need to teach, and sabi nga sa Great Commission, and teaching them everything that I have taught you. That is the first thing that we need to do once we are anointed. Proclaim liberty to captives. Siya sabi dyan, those who have been kept ignorant will be delivered. Marami pa hanggang ngayon, mga kapatid, ang hindi nakakaalam bakit masama ang sumasamba sa mga diyos Our task as Christians and believers of the living God is to explain to them that idolatry is an abomination to the Lord, our God. I was telling you about the story of Carlos Anacondia. When the priests of the church close to the town hall and to the town square heard about Carlos Anacondia's crusade, ano po ang ginawa ng mga pare? Inilagay po nila sa kanilang mga balikat, meron pong pole, okay? ang estatwa o graven image ni Virgin Mary. Nilagay po nito. And while they were going to the same town square where our Carlos Anacondillo was speaking, bigla hong nag ito pong si Carlos Anacondillo against idolatry at that very moment. Even before he was able to complete his rebuke, bumagsak po yung estatwa, that graven image. It was not broken in pieces, but it was powdered. Napakadali yung masabi na pag nabagsak, albawa, nabagsak lang, di ba? So broken into pieces, madaling maunawaan yun. Pero nung pong bumagsak, hindi po na, it was not broken into pieces, but it was powdered. Walang mata, walang kamay, walang, walang binte, nothing can be seen, any trace of something that looks like human dun po sa kinabagsakan nung graven image. But it was powdered. Okay? Heal the blind. Ibig po sabihin, our task is to pray for those who are sick. 
You have been anointed. You have been set apart. Your task, among others, is to pray for those who are sick. Hindi lang si Brother Diwa, hindi lang si Brother Bing at ang, at ang elders ng simbahan ang mayroon pong karapatan at pribileyong manalangin para sa mga may sakit. Ang bawat isa po sa atin ay pinagkalooban ng Panginoon ng kapangyarihang manalangin at makapagpagaling ng may sakit. Amen? Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Hallelujah. And finally, nakalagay po dyan, free the oppressed. We have to fight anything that causes people to be oppressed. Like what? Corruption in high places. Corruption in government. Okay? Those uns, uh, unscrupulous practices of big business. Okay? Poverty. We have to speak against poverty. We have to speak against those attempts okay, to impinge on our territorial uh, rights, especially in the West Philippine Sea, mga kapatid. We have to, we have to speak against uh, uh, unscrupulous use of the budget. Kapag tayo nakikita natin na may mga problema, we, have, we, we, we cannot afford to just keep quiet. We have to speak against those things. Okay? Bakit? Sapagkat sinasabi po sa Nahum chapter 1, verse 13, and please put this inside your spirit, though they are at full strength and many, they will be cut down and pass away. Ito po ang pangako ng Panginoon sa mga espiritu ng immorality, corruption, stealing public money. Ito po. They will be cut down and pass away. Though I have afflicted you, Binibigyan tayo ng iba't ibang uri ng pagsubok ng Panginoon. Okay? Lalo-lalo na noong 2023, mga kapatid, napakarami nating pagsubok. Nagkasakit, may, may mga uh, namayapa sa atin, okay? nagkaroon ng mga problema sa iba't ibang pamilya, etc. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, and this is His assurance to us, though I have afflicted you, I will afflict you no more. And now I will break His yoke from off you and will burst your bonds apart. Wawasakin na ng Panginoon okay? ang yoke ng kaaway laban sa atin. Isn't that exciting, mga kapatid? Praise God. The next chart, the, the next uh, PowerPoint is a kind of anointing But there was no mention of oil. No mention of oil. Okay? But this is a very important teaching, mga kapatid. I will not belabor this, but I think I need to include this. In my previous preaching, mga kapatid, pinag-usapan natin yung key of David, right? That if you have the key of David, no one can open whatever you shut. And no one can shut what... And whatever, no one can open whatever you shut. Whatever... You did, nobody can reverse. Yan po yung key of David. All right. Kanino ay binigay ng Panginoon ang key of David? Okay. Dito po sa Isaiah chapter 22, verses 22, ito po ay binigay niya sa kanyang servant na si Eliakim. This was taken from the previous servant whose name was Shebna. Okay? Now, ano po ang sinasabi niya? In that day, I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and I will clothe him with your robe. This is anointing. Okay? And will bind your sas on him. Nilagyan po siya ng sas. And will commit your authority to his hand. Pinagkatiwala ang kapangyarihan sa kanya. And he shall be a father to the inhabitants He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. See? Yung importansya po ng fathering. Okay? Fathering is when he's always around. When your father is always around. When your father is spares nothing to provide for your needs. 
Fathering is when He always encourages you kahit na napakarami ng, tina, ng dinadaanan mo. That is fathering. And that was the call of God to Eliakim, the servant. Ang sabi pa niya, And I will place on his shoulder, if something is placed on your shoulder, kagaya nung ginagawa, nung nabubuhay pa si Queen Elizabeth, kukuha siya ng espada, ilalagay niya espada, dito po sa, sa shoulder, sa balikat, nung kanyang nina knight, yung ginagawa niyang lord sa house of lord, o kaya yung knight, yung sinatawag na sir, lalagay po yun dito. Which means, governmental authority. Okay? Placed on his shoulder the key of the house of David. He shall open and none shall shut. And he shall shut and none shall open. Okay? Napaka-powerful po niyan. We can use the key of David by saying, I appropriate the key of David and I will shut the Philippines from all kinds of pestilence, corruption, etc., etc., But I will open the gates of the Philippines to more investment, more prosperity, more economic growth, more jobs. Pwede rin po ninyong gamitin niya sa inyong pamilya. Sinasarado ko ang pintuan ng aming tahanan laban sa pestilence, immorality, okay? at iba't iba pang peste sa tahanan. At binubuksan ko ang aming tahanan sa pagpasok ng kung ano ng iba't ibang uri ng pagpapala. Okay? Kagalingan mula sa sakit, kayamanan, promotion after promotion. That is the importance of the key of David. You have the key of David because you are anointed. And your anointing will secure for you the appropriate use of the key to the house of David. Okay? Pero ano pong ginawa dyan? Anointing involved, number one, I will clothe him with your robe. Ibig sabihin niyan, the robe of authority. I will bind your sash on him and will commit your authority to his hand and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. In other words, the Lord is asking for purity. The Lord is asking for dedication and commitment to the Lord, our God. Hallelujah. And this is my last My last, uh, last chart, David, once again. Ano ho ba yung mga anointing ni David? Pwede ba natin makuha yung anointing ni David? He had a prophetic anointing, mga kapatid. If you just read the Psalms of David, napaka-prophetic po nung lahat ng kanyang mga salmo. Mga bagay na hindi natin maubos, maisip. Ang sabi ni David, Lord, pag ako'y nasa ilalim ng dagat, nandun ka. Pag nandun ako sa ibabaw, nandun ka. Who can say that, mga kapatid? Only a prophet can say that. Only a prophet who hears the Word of God, who hears God, who converses with God, even on a daily basis. David had that prophetic uh, anointing. He had a kingly anointing, 17 years old. Inanointed siyang king. Why? Because for many years, He was tending to the flock of his father. Kaya wag ho nating mamaliitin yung pong mga maliliit na mga bagay na ipinagkakatiwala na sa atin sa simbahang ito. Today, nagwawalis tayo. Tomorrow, you'll be here preaching the word of God. Okay? Today, nakikinig ka lang sa inuuto sa iyo. Tomorrow, the Lord will even ask you to prophesy. Okay? To be his spokesman. That's David. He's a warrior. And he was trained even when he was still young. He had the priestly anointing. Remember? Doon po sa bread, sa showbread. Okay? Siya po yung kinain niya yun. So, balit, siya ay inanoint pa rin ng Panginoon because his heart was pure. He had the worship anointing. Remember, nagsasayaw si David. Samantalang itong asawa niyang si Michal, he was, uh, she was so negative about what he was doing. But David did not spare anything in worshiping the Lord. Kaya meron po tayong Davidic form of worship. That is Davidic. That is a kind of anointing. He had the, 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 he had the, the anointing of deliverance. Okay? He had the anointing of deliverance. Remember, 
mismo yung, yung mga tinangay na kanilang mga asawa, kanilang mga ari-arian, nabawi po niya lahat yan. That's deliverance. And finally, prayer. Doon po sa lahat ng salmo, napakagaganda po ng lahat ng mga salmo na kinuha at ginawa nito pong si David. Brothers and sisters, there are other forms of anointing. That is the Davidic anointing. We have the Caleb anointing. Yung po yung finishing anointing. Napaka-importante po sa simbahan yun. Hindi po tayo dito, ayaw po natin ng walang finishing anointing. Yung po sisimulan mo ngayon, hot na hot ka ngayon, bukas wala na. Walang resulta. We don't want that. You have to have the finishing anointing of both Caleb and Joshua. That whatever you started, it shall be finished to its logical end. Amen? You have the Joseph anointing, multiplication. You have the Isaacar anointing, knowing the times and the season, and that you are always available to serve the Lord. Napakadali po magsabi, available ako, okay ako, okay, gagawin natin yan. Tapos wala ka. See? But Isaac, our anointing is twofold. One, you know the times and the season. You can tell what season it is. And second, you are always ready for action. Amen? Praise God. Last chart. Mga kapatid, that is the logo of the church. And you have the flag of the Philippines. The church needs you. That's why we want to anoint you. Our country also needs you. Okay? Hindi dahil sa tayo ay, ay uh, masunuring mga Kristiyano, tayo ay walang value added sa ating bansa. The fact that we pay our taxes, the, pay that we, the fact that we follow the laws, the fact that we preach the good news so that there will be peace in the land, immeasurable value to our nation and to the community.